The success of your predecessor does not always guarantee success for you, but it is usually a pretty good place to start. You've probably heard the legend by now. Halfway through 2014, an unknown Chinese startup came out of nowhere, promising to deliver a flagship experience at an affordable price. Much to the surprise of pretty much everyone, the OnePlus One was actually pretty great. It wound up being our top device of 2014. Even more surprising was that it bested some really stiff competition. The Galaxy S5, Note 4, Note Edge, Moto X, Nexus 6, iPhone 6, etc. That's still a feeling of disbelief that a small, inexperienced company could disrupt such an established hierarchy. Now we've got the sequel, the aptly named OnePlus 2. Is it everything you expect? I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and this is our review of the OnePlus 2. As I do with all my reviews, let me begin with a disclaimer. I use this for four days as my daily driver, and day three, OnePlus issued a huge software patch. Brandon, who did the written portion of this review, tested the device for six days. If you want to see more additional information, including gallery and extra detail, hit the link down below. Tested it on AT&T's network, and we used the four gigabyte variant. Whenever I test a phone, I like to know the answer to the one simple question. Would I buy this myself? By the end, you'll know. Similar to the OnePlus One, the company's new flagship combines high-end specs with a to-die-for price. At just 329 bucks or 389 for the 4 gig model we tested, buyers get a deliciously premium phone you'd swear was hundreds more. And this thing is unlocked for all you folks looking to avoid re-upping a contract commitment, although it will not work with Sprint or Verizon. That in itself is enough to convince customers at least consider the OnePlus Two. But the device is so much more than a luring price tag. You also get beautiful hardware, great battery life, decent camera, fingerprint sensor, dual SIM support. It also runs some very elegant software. Oxygen OS, based on Android 5.1.1, which in a lot of ways is better than stock Android, but we'll talk way more about that later. Other than that price, the thing that stands out for most people is the phone's impressive spec sheet. Snapdragon 810, 4 gigs of RAM, 13 megapixel camera with OIS, 64 gigs of internal storage, a 3,300 milliamp hour battery, USB-C, and a beautiful 5.5 inch full HD display. Clearly it's high end, though there's one very controversial omission, and that's the lack of NFC. You'll likely fall into two camps on NFC. Brandon's, who says he hardly uses NFC, and certainly won't miss it on the two, or mine, who during my four days of testing, found three separate instances where it would have come in handy. From setting up a new phone using Lollipop's really handy tap to transfer information to mobile payments via Google Wallet, I tend to think that I'm in the majority here. I had a chance to ask co-founder Carl Pei about this curious omission, since it was on the One's original spec sheet. He said OnePlus studied the use of the original and found people just weren't using it. So there you have it, whether you agree or disagree, that's the answer. I don't want to fixate too much on the lack of NFC, but I did want it to be mentioned, because customers still get a lot of phone to work with. What surprised us most about last year's was how incredible the OnePlus One's hardware felt. This year's model is even better. The new model's design is pretty similar to the year before with some subtle refinements. The outer frame is made of an alloy of aluminum magnesium, while the overall footprint's been minimized, although very slight. That textured, really awesome, sandstone material has also been improved, at least so OnePlus tells us, making for a more durable handset. The back can also be removed, allowing customers to use one of five total options. Sandstone, bamboo, rosewood, black apricot, and Kevlar. OnePlus also included an alert slider, which allows you to quickly switch between Android Dollypop's three notification profiles. All notifications, priority notifications, and just none at all. It sounds like a small addition, but it's a lot handier than you think, and it's one of my favorite iPhone features, so certainly a welcome addition to Android. Aside from the metal chassis, the most obvious difference is the addition of fingerprint sensor, which is the same oval shape as Galaxy S6's home button. And it works exactly as you'd expect. Place your finger on the sensor and your device will unlock. That's it. The good news is OnePlus promised it's pretty fast. I wouldn't say it's faster than Touch ID or the technology used by Samsung, but it's still really quick. I also appreciate the device can be turned on just by placing your thumb on the sensor. No need to turn the screen on, then unlock it. The sensor though doesn't actually move, it's not a physical button. And more than once I found myself desperately trying to push it. Above that fingerprint sensor is a 5.5 inch 1080p screen which OnePlus says uses the world's most advanced in-cell IPS LCD and ultra bright LED technologies. In theory, not only does that mean you get a beautiful display to look at, you also get unmatched performance in direct sunlight. It also has a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio, making for deep blacks and vivid colors. Brandon never subscribed to the QHD craze, but I'm starting to see the value. You can see so much more on the screen. I didn't miss it too much, but if you're used to QHD, it's easy to tell that this is not it. Content looks crisp, pictures pop, and games look fantastic. Viewing angles are pretty great too, although you'll mostly be staring directly at the thing heads on anyway. And yeah, it's pretty easy to see outdoors. Brightness can get up to 600 nits, which is superior to the iPhone 6's 559 if you're keeping track. We had a few questions about audio when we did our unboxing, so the bottom facing speakers is loud and clear, though I wouldn't call it exceptional. OnePlus has included an audio tuner app if you really want to get into nitty gritty with your sound. 
but they really only notice the difference if you plug in the headphones anyway. There are three stock sound profiles, music, movie, and game, which can all be tweaked to your exact preference. I mostly though just left things stock. So that leads us into software, which is pretty stellar for both its restraint and for what it adds. Earlier this year, OnePlus announced it was building its own ROM atop Android due to the premature breakup with Cyanogen. We got a brief taste of the first version a few months back, and things have really come a long way since then. I didn't run into a single issue. Performance was smooth and apps never stalled. I never felt like the software got in the way. That's because what you get is mostly stock Android. However, OnePlus's team has added some smart and subtle tweaks, which helped elevate the overall experience. Also, other additions like custom icon packs and dark mode make for elegant and simple customizations. There's also a new home screen to the left called Shelf, which is essentially a screen for widgets, and it's very similar to the layout of Google Now with different widgets separated as cards. It's a convenient way to access frequently used apps, contacts, and more, but it keeps all that clutter out of the way. And, like the rest of Oxygen, it offers some nice customization options too. If you prefer, you can always just choose to not use Shelf altogether. If you want to know more about Oxygen, hit the link down below. We did a full video detailing the OS. So with hardware and software so good, you're probably wondering, how's that battery, John? And I'm glad to say you'll get plenty of life out of the OnePlus 2's 3300 mAh battery, which is a little bit bigger than what included in last year's model. In the beginning, when I started testing, battery life was a huge concern. I posted some results on Twitter. But after a software update, in the middle of testing, things seemed to improve quite a bit. Brandon and I both tried hammering this thing with Twitter, music, games, YouTube, email, and everything else within reason. I never saw the merit in non-essential battery testing, and it held up like a champ. I got through hours and hours of normal human usage. It was way better than the Galaxy S6, and we'll just leave it at that. What a difference 1080p screens make. The bummer part of the OnePlus 2, however, is that you don't get the benefits of quick charge or wireless charging, which isn't a deal breaker, but they're definitely missed. On the performance side, the combo of the Snapdragon 810 and 4 gigs of RAM made this thing a speed freak, and not once did I encounter any heat issues. Everything was fast and without any lag. And because I know you guys love benchmarks, this next part's for you. 16,460 on Quadrant, 43,237 on N22571, 2,251 on Geekbench 3 and broken down to 692 on single core, 2,251 on multi core. So, what about that camera? While photos are decently crisp and colors accurate, I found the camera's actual performance to be a disappointment. Devices like the Galaxy S6, HTC One M9 are capable of snapping pictures in the blink of an eye. The OnePlus 2, however, can be sluggish to take pictures. So there's a noticeable pause between pressing the shutter button and actually taking the picture which could pose a problem for parents with hyper kids, which I know a thing or two about. Alleviating that problem is the inclusion of OIS, although it still won't save fast moving objects from blurring. I'm hoping a software update is going to fix that problem. For much more on the camera, be sure to check out the gallery and Brandon's take. He's a resident phone photographer. Links will be down below. So what's the verdict on the OnePlus 2? First, negatives. The invite system is still annoying, but a necessary evil, and one of the side effects of being a startup. No NFC is certainly a drawback for me, but you might differ. The camera shutter is slow, and no wireless or quick charge or glaring emissions. No expendable storage, no removable battery will be missed by some. And on that front, why have dual SIMs and not an SD card slot? On the plus side, it's under 400 bucks. You can't have everything and expect not to pay for it. Build quality is top notch, and the Android experience is stellar. The phone is blazing fast, battery life is great, and USB-C is a really welcome addition. This phone gets an 8 on the Techno Buffalo score out of 10. And the question I asked at the beginning, would I buy this myself? The answer? Absolutely. And you should too. So what do you guys think about the OnePlus 2? Is it the phone's going to grace your pocket for the next 12, 18, 24 months or longer? Love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave in the comments down below. Till next time, I'm John Render from Techno Buffalo. See you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.